Hello friends, myself Chetangar, your mentor for today's session and I welcome you all to our International Mathematics Olympiad series. In this series, we discuss previous year questions of various uh, countries mass Olympiad exam. Right? And in today's lecture, we will be discussing SMO paper, previous year, some, uh, some previous year questions of SMO paper, which is Singapore Mathematics Olympiad. Um, basically, this exam uh, has three sections, right? Um, the exam is separate for junior section and separate for senior section and there is an open section also. So in today's session, we will be discussing questions from junior section only uh, that is held for those students who are up to grade 10. Right? So let's start the session. This is a question from 2013, right? The question says that let S is a set containing first 49 natural numbers, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and up to and so on till 49, right? What is the maximum value of N? such that it is possible to select n numbers from s and arrange them in a circle in such a way that the product of any two adjacent number in the circle is less than 10, 100 right so thoda sa tricky uh, so the question is a little bit tricky right uh, what we what 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 we will do see uh, let's take any two two digit number right any two two digit number the product of any two two digit number will definitely be greater than 100 right so that means um, and there are only nine single digit numbers right that is one two up to nine right so there are only nine single digit numbers so that means we can take a maximum of nine two digit numbers we can take a maximum of nine two digit numbers why because if we take 10 two digit number or let's say more than 10 then when we will arrange these numbers in a circle then definitely two of them will be consecutive and hence uh, the product of those two adjacent number will be definitely be greater than 100 right so that means we can take a maximum of nine two digit numbers because there are a maximum of nine single digit numbers available right that simply means our answer cannot be greater than 18, right? So now let us check whether uh, the answer is possible when uh, we take 18 numbers, right? So all the nine uh, numbers should be, uh, need to be taken, right? It's nine single digit numbers. So let's take the smallest nine double digit number, okay? Let's take 10 and uh, to maximize the product, let's take nine here and let's take eight here. I'm arranging them in a circle, right? So the next number is 11. So let's put 11 here and 12 here. And it is quite obvious that between any two, two digit number, there must be one single digit number. Then only the product can be less than 100. Although we need to check whether this is attainable or not. If we have found such a configuration, then we can say the maximum value of n should be 18, right? So we are trying to find uh, such a configuration, right? So 10, 9, 8, 11, 12, let's, let's write 7 here and 6 here. Till then, uh, uh, there is no problem because 10 into 9 is 90. Here it is 80. 11 into 9 is 99. This is uh, 96, right? Now this is uh, 66 and this is 84. No problem till here. No. Let's write 13 here and 14 here. And uh, now what we will do, let's write 5 here and 4 here, right? Now what? Uh, let's say uh, 13, 14, 15 here, 16 here, and let's write 3 here, 2 here, and let's write 17, 18, and let's write 1 here. So these are the, the let's uh, arrange the numbers in such a way, right, like this as shown. So th they are 18 numbers, and uh, we have arranged them in a circle such that now you can take uh, the product of any two conservative numbers they will definitely be less than 100 right so the maximum possible value of uh, such n will be 18 right so we can take maximum of 18 numbers and we can arrange them in a circle such that product of any two adjacent number will be less than 100 right all right let's proceed to the next question uh, this is a simple this is a simple question of number theory okay we need to find the least positive integer n such that 2 power 8 plus 2 power 11 plus 2 power n is a perfect square, right? Okay, let's let's first simplify these two terms. Let's take 2 power 8 comma. So what we are left with 1 plus 2 cube plus 2 raised to power n, right? And this is 9 into 2 power 8. So we can write this is 2 power 4 into 3 squared. 
plus 2 power n and we want this to be a perfect square. So let's assume this to be uh, something, let's say m squared, right? So this is what, this is 48, right? We can say that 2 raised to power m, that should be equals to what? m squared minus, this, is, this was 48 squared. And we can write it as m minus 48 times m plus 48, right? Now the simple thing is, uh, this must be a power of 2, this must also be a power of 2 because uh, the net result is 2 raised to power n, right? So let's say this is 2 raised to power k and the remaining power of 2 goes to this factor that is that will be 2 raised to power n minus k and that is m plus 48. Now let's subtract these two quantities. If we subtract these two quantities on the right hand side, what we will uh, we will get 48 plus 48 that will be 96, and here we will get 2 raised to power n minus k minus 2 raised to power k, which can be further uh, simplified as let's take 2 raised to power k common, and that will be 2 raised to power n minus 2k minus 1. Right? I don't think there is any problem till this step. Right? Now, uh, now we can break 96 as uh, that is 32 into 3 and that can be written as 2 raised to power 5 into 3 and that is equals to 2 raised to power k to 2 raised to power n minus 2k minus 1. So if we compare these two things, k must be what? k must be 5 and uh, if this is, this has to be 3 and then that means this n minus 2k has to be 2 because 2 square that is 4 minus 1 is 3, right? So n minus 2k that should be what? That should be 2. Right. And since we have derived k is 5, so that simply implies that n should be 12. Right. So n will be a unique value. So now the answer for this question must be n equals to 12. Right. All right, guys. Let's proceed to the next question then. Uh, this is from 2011. The question says that n is the smallest positive integer such that sum of its digits is 2011. Right. How many digits does n have? Right. All right. So, uh, to maximize the sum of digits in least possible uh, number of digits, that is possible if the digits are have the maximum face value, right? So, let's let's put uh, almost all the digits to be equal to 9. So, let's see how many uh, nines we can place. So, let's divide 2011 by 9 and uh, the quotient will be what? That will be 2, uh, 21, that will be 2, 31, that will be 3. And the remainder uh, remainder should be four. So we can write uh, okay. So we can write uh, that will be plus four upon nine. Right. So that simply means we can write 2011 as 223 times nine plus four. Right. All right. So that means um, we can take 223 nines. Right. Nine 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 nine. 9 these are 223 times and we want the sum to be 2011 so we must add 1 4 Anna. so since we are interested in smallest positive integer and the 4 must be there in the starting so this is the number and how many uh, digits does this have this has 223 digits plus 1 4 digits Anna. so that means it has total 224 digits right so this is the smallest possible number. Why this is smallest? Because if you are breaking 9 in any two digits, then number of digits will increase and hence the number will become a larger number than the number which have already written on your screen. Right? So the answer to this question is 224 digits and this is a very easy question. Alright, now let's move to the next question. Okay, this is a question from geometry. The question says that ABCD is a rectangle as you can see with AB as 10 units. Alright. Draw C1 and C2 with diameter AB and CD. Okay, so A Q P B. This is a semicircle. D Q P C. This is again a semicircle, right? Let PQ is the point of intersection of C1 and C2. These are the points P and Q. All right. And uh, if the circle with diameter PQ is tangent to AB and CD, okay. So this PQ is the diameter, right? And this is a circle complete circle which is clearly tangent on AB as well as on CD. Then what is the area of the shaded region? Okay, we need to find the this black area, right? Okay, let's let's uh, uh, write this as this point of contact as 
what you will write. Let's write down this as R. And uh, if we join PR and if we join QR, both of these values must be the radius of this bigger semicircle D, Q, P, C. And what was the diameter? Diameter was 10, AB was 10, and since that was a rectangle, so CD must be 10. That means this radius PR that should be what? 10 upon 2, that is 5, right? And clearly PQ is the diameter of this uh, complete circle and we know diameter subtends are 90 degree at the circumference. So uh, this is 5, this is again 5. We can say that PQ will be 5 under root 2, right? Alright, so what we need to find? Uh, we need to find the shaded black area, alright? So let's, let's uh, first find the sector, area of sector. Okay, what I'll do? I'll find this, uh, oh, this one area, right? This area I'll find. I'll double it up, okay? Because by symmetry, uh, this uh, above area and this area, oops, this area and this area should be same, right? By symmetry, right? So what I'll do, I'll find this white area that is enclosed in the uh, semicircle in this circle, you know? and uh, then what I'll do, I'll subtract the this white part from the complete circle, right? So I'll I'm just finding this area, right? or you can see the above area. So how I can find it by subtracting the area of triangle from the uh, quarter circle, right? Clearly PRQ is 90 degree. So let's find the area of the quarter circle. Its diameter, uh, its radius is 5. So area will be pi r square, that is 25 pi upon 4. Minus area of this triangle, that will be clearly 25 upon 2. Right now this is the area of this shaded region. Let's multiply it by 2. Why we are multiplying it by 2? Because now we will get this complete area. So that is nothing but 25 pi by 2 minus 25. Now let's subtract this area from this complete circle. So what is the radius of this complete circle? Diameter is PQ which is 5 root 2. So radius will be 5 upon under root 2. So its complete area is pi r squared minus this white portion area which is this so let's subtract 25 pi by 2 minus 25 from this value right now we should get our answer and as you can see this is 25 pi by 2 minus 25 pi by 2 plus 25 these two terms gets cancelled out what we are left with is 25 so what should be the area of the shaded region that should be 25 right all right guys so that's it from today's session today we have discussed four previous year questions of singapore mass olympiad exam of junior section in the next lecture we will be discussing uh, some previous year questions of a different country right so uh, see you in the next session till then take a very good care of yourself thank you bye bye